when we compare actual and budgeted figures as part of cost control, we want to calculate variances for each of the costs, or each of the line items, um, in order to see what went wrong or whether we over or underspent, and then if we overspent, where did it happen and what can be done um, about it. But the problem is if you look at, um, for example, material in this case, we had uh, the budget, it's already flexed for the actual units produced. It's a variable cost, so we had to flex it. So we, in order to produce the actual units of 1,100, we should have spent, remember should have, that's our flexible budget, we should have spent 11,000, but we actually spent 11,495. So we spent more than what we should have spent, and we want to know why. Now, uh, we... The, the problem is this could have been as a result of paying too much per kilogram of raw materials or it could have been because we wasted some of the raw materials so we used more than what we um, what we were supposed to use so there's two possible reasons it could be a quantity difference or a quantity variance or a price variance and we need to somehow separate the two now the problem is if you look carefully how did we calculate this 11,000? That is the should have or the budgeted or the standard amount for material. That is made up of the actual units produced, that's the 1,100 units, multiplied by the standard cost per unit. But standard cost per unit is made up of a standard quantity. So let's assume it was one kilogram per unit. So the standard makeup of a product uses one kilogram of raw materials and then times the standard price per kilogram so that's the 10 rand or 10 per kilogram so our standard cost per unit so this is you have to listen very carefully to the terms we use so standard cost per unit is made up of the standard quantity which might be kilograms meters liters any other measure times standard price per kilogram or liter. So be, you always look out carefully, are they talking about standard cost per unit or standard quantity or standard price? So in this example, let's assume our standard quantity is one kilogram per unit and the standard price is 10 per kilogram. So that will mean 10 per unit standard cost. Now, so those are the three elements that, that the value is made up of. It's actual, quanti actual units produced times standard quantities times standard price. And then on the actual side, we also have actual units produced. The actual expense relates to the actual units. But then we have the actual quantity that was used. That's the actual kilograms that was physically put into production times the actual price that was paid per kilogram. So if you look carefully now, we can see there's two things that differs between the budget and the actual. First off, it's standard quantity versus actual quantity. And then we have standard price per kilogram versus actually actual price per kilogram. So by simply subtracting the two, we don't split the difference between the two. So we need a, a, another column in the middle. And that is what we do here. We have a new column in the middle that we call the actual quantity of input, so that's this AQI, so that's actual quantity of input, and we, we value it at standard price. So see what happens now. We have the actual units produced times the actual quantity, so that is the physical kilograms that was put into production to make the 1100 units but we value it at the standard price. So now on the left of this column, look at the differences now. We've got actual um, units produced, actual units produced. Standard price, standard price. So that's the same. There's only one difference, and that is the standard quantity per unit versus the actual quantity per unit. So it's the quantity that we isolate here. So we will call this the quantity variance. And on the right-hand side of this middle column, we let's see the differences here. So we have actual units produced, actual units produced, actual quantity, actual quantity. So no difference there. The quantities are the same. 
only difference is we've got standard price per kilogram actual price per kilogram so the price is the thing that is different so we'll call this the price variance so we isolate the difference in prices on this right hand side and on the left hand side we isolate the difference in quantities used and now we can simply calculate the middle column and that will automatically then give us our variances in the two the these two columns these are variance columns and the middle column would be the actual quantity of input at standard so let's see if we can calculate those values so obviously enough information needs to be given in the question and it can be given in every any um, type of way but if you need if you know what you need to what you need from the information you will be able to calculate it from the given information so let's see in the middle column we need the actual quantity of the input so that's the actual kilograms that were used and that should have been given somewhere here we get it from the actual information so in real life if you think about it it should be fairly straightforward to get the actual kilograms that was used it must be recorded somewhere requisitions or the purchase invoices etc so our actual quantity of input comes from the right hand side from the actual side but we must value it at standard and the standard price per kilogram is 10 so that gives us a, a value in the middle of 12,100 and now we can look at the variances so let's look at the quantity variance first on the left hand side so we said we should have spent 11,000 for material to make 1100 units we did spend at the standard price 12,100 so that's a difference of 1,100 and I'm going to put it in brackets because we want to indicate whether it's positive or negative and in this case it's negative and we can also put a U next to it for unfavorable. So it's a negative variance because we spend more than what we should have spent. It's more than the budgeted amount. So it's a negative variance. Another way to do it and if you, if you compare this to your textbooks or your notes you might say but I've never seen this table before but look at the formula that you see in front of you in your textbook or notes. The formula there would be how many units I uh, yeah it would have been how many kilograms I should have used which would have been the one kilogram per unit so it's it would have been 1100 kilograms and then you would deduct how many kilograms did I did I use the one two one oh the actual and that would give you the variance in kilograms which you would multiply by the standard price of 10 and that would give you the same answer and it would also be a negative since we used more than what we should have used so you can see this table gives you exactly the same answer because we are doing exactly the same thing it's just much quicker to do it this way but we'll look at your your calculations again later on now let's look at the price variance so again we have what it should have cost us at the standard price what it cost us at the actual price and the difference is 605 in this case it's positive because the actual is less than the standard so we can put an f next to it for favorable and let's see if you think of your formulas that you might see in your textbook um, there they compare the standard price to the actual price so the standard price per kilogram is 10 minus the actual price and we need to calculate that so that would be this 11495 divided by the 1210 and let's see I'm just going to do that on my calculator quickly you might do it before me so that gives us nine and a half so we basically saving 50 cents or half a currency unit per kilogram and we multiplied by the actual kilograms you can see it's actual kilograms on both sides and that is the formula that you'll see in the textbook and in your notes to get to the same variance but we didn't need to do these formulas here because we could simply say budget less the middle column and then the middle column less the actual and that will give you the variances so let's see that for labor as well okay so labor um, we've we said the middle column is actual quantity of input at standard so there we have it actual quantity of labor hours would be 2000 and that comes from the actual column or from the actual um, records of the company and we value it at standard price so 10 
So that gives us a value of 20,000 in the middle. And now we can simply say budgeted less the middle column gives us 2,000. And it's positive because we spent less than what we should have spent. Um, and that's because we worked 2,000 hours where we expected to work two hours per unit. So per 1,100 units. So the should have hours, we should have spent 2,200 hours. We only worked 2,000 hours. So we saved the difference of 200 hours times the 10, the standard price. And that's where the variance comes from. So you can see it's the same as the formulas that you have in your textbook. On the price side, or um, for labor, we call the price variance a rate variance or a tariff variance because we, we don't talk about a price per hour. We usually talk about a rate per hour, but it's the same as a price variance. So that would be negative 2,000. So it's unfavorable variance because we spent more than what we should have spent. And we can calculate that. So our actual um, cost divided by actual hours gives us a rate of 11 per hour. And we know the standard rate was 10 per hour. So it's one per hour extra. And if we multiply it by the actual hours, that's where our 2,000 unfavorable variance, variance comes from. So just a quick mention on the, on the words or the, the, what we call the different variances. So for material, we have a quantity or a usage variance. For labor, the same variance would be an efficiency variance. For variable overheads, it's also efficiency variance. For fixed overheads, we won't have a variance there for now. And then on the price side, we have a material price variance. We have a labor rate variance or a tariff variance. And then variable overheads would also be a rate variance. So these are the names that you'll see, but it's the same a quantity or a price variance. And then lastly, variable overheads, let's quickly do that one. So actual quantity of input, so variable overheads, let's assume that was allocated on the basis of labor hours. So 2,000 labor hours at the rate, standard rate of 15, so that's 30,000. And then you'll see we have no rate variance or price variance because it's the same. And we have a favorable variance of efficiency variance of, oh, of 3,000 because we um, spent less hours than what we should have spent. We should have spent 2,200 hours. That's the 1,100 units times the standard two hours that it should take us. Um, and that was more than what we actually sp um, spent working on it. And now the last variance is the fixed overheads, the fixed manufacturing overheads. So there we only have one variance. Since we're using the variable costing system at this level, um, at, at an higher level, you might split this even further and we might use absorption costing. But for this year, you're only going to use variable costing. So we only have one variance and that's the difference between the budgeted, which shouldn't change if we change the units. So that's 40,000. That's what it should cost us and what it actually cost us. So the difference is 1,000 and it's favorable because we have spent less than what we should have spent. So and that we call the fixed overhead spending variance, or sometimes they call it the expenditure variance. So these are the variances, and this is how you calculate it. You'll see in your textbook, it's pages and pages full of calculations. But the, the best is to do it this way, and then go and compare your answers and see how you can uh, how of, see if you can figure out how this is the same as your um, variances that you see in the textbook and in your notes. This method is just much quicker because what you would do is you'd first flex the whole budget. That's step one. Step two is to write down the actuals in the in the actual column that should usually be given in a question. Step three is calculate the actual quantity of input at standard. And then the fourth step is to simply calculate the variances, the price variance and the quantity variance.